Good evening, everyone. My name is Ogechi Oheto, aka OG. I'm the Vice President for JAM. Um, I would like to introduce Dr. Carrie McAdoo. Dr. McAdoo has been a pharmacist for 22 years in various areas of inventory and supply management, including retail, hospital, compounding, and independent pharmacies. She received her Doctor of Pharmacy degree from the University of South Carolina in 2001. She is a licensed pharmacist in 10 states and completed training for her fellowship in anti-aging medicine. Dr. McAdoo is currently the manager of pharmacy inventory management and supply logistics at Mayo Clinic Florida and is a member of the Enterprise Medication Shortage Management Oversight Subcommittee. Please join me in welcoming Dr. McAdoo. Thank you very much. Do I need to hold this? Okay. Put it down there. Okay. Thank you. Am I all set? Do I need to turn anything on? All right. Um, I was sharing when I first came in here. I am not technologically savvy at all. So he handed this to me and I'm like, what do I what do I do with it? Do I have to do anything? So anyway, hope everyone can hear me. This is just for online. Is that correct? Okay, yep. good. Perfect. All right. Thank you so much for having me um, here this evening. We're going to spend a little bit of time talking about the biggest pain um, in uh, my world, and that's drug shortages. Um, as mentioned, I have over 20 years of experience um, as a pharmacist. Uh, my roles have been in retail, independent pharmacy, hospital, compounding pharmacy, and at, in each one of those, I have found my way to be involved in drug inventory, and supply chain management. I've been at Mayo a little over two years now. Um, right now, I'm involved with our medication shortage subcommittee, um, our medication quality and safety subcommittee, as well as the P&T committee. I'm also part of a group purchasing organization known as Vizient. Um, Vizient is an organization that helps us <clears throat> with um, obtaining critical drugs that go on shortage, as well as managing costs and helping improve our operations. This evening, there are a few objectives that I'd like to make sure that we have time to discuss. We're gonna identify the problem of drug shortages. We're gonna understand the causes that lead to those shortages. We're gonna learn how we got into this increased number of drug shortages. We're gonna discuss specific drug shortages related to antibiotics and oncolytic drugs. We're gonna look at notification and responding to a drug shortage and look over solutions to improve the drug shortage problem. What is a drug shortage? The FDA defines a drug shortage as a period of time when the demand <clears throat> or the projected demand for the drug within the US exceeds the supply of that drug. At the end of Q3 of this year, we were at 305 active shortages. That was just down a little after coming close to our decade old high of, a, of 320 shortages this year. An average drug shortage lasts roughly about one and a half years. And a handful of those drugs will remain on shortage for over a decade. Now the graph that I have here, um, it's one of my favorite graphs to show. Anytime I'm asked to talk about drug shortages or I have to provide a presentation, um, I go to the ASHP, which I'll speak about um, in a few moments, uh, drug shortage uh, management website, and they update this every quarter. But uh, what I like about it is it tells a great story of exactly how the drug shortages are affecting pharmacies across the U.S. Um, you can see here, just in the past two years, we've had about a 30% increase in drug shortages. Drug shortages are everywhere, certainly getting national attention right now. You can't go a week without turning on local news, national news, and hearing some sort of story about drug shortages. Um, most recently, the, the eye drops have come into play. Those were recalled, just your plain old lubricant, generic eye drops you can get over the counter at any pharmacy. But every week, it seems like there's a new one. For me, it seems about every hour. I was trying to get out the door to come here today, and I had Teams messages popping up. Oh, this, this is no longer available. What are we going to do about it? Um, you can see it in journal articles, social media, internet sites. Um, everyone's talking about all of these drug shortages. I was standing in line at Starbucks a couple weeks ago, a couple in front of me. They were talking about the Adderall shortage. They had a son 
They didn't know what they were going to do. They were talking about dosing him every other day or maybe waiting two days and not on the weekends. So it's a big problem. And certainly everyone is feeling the pain with that. So what are the causes? Drug shortages, they occur for many different reasons and many different points throughout the supply chain. Supply and demand. We need more drug. Manufacturer can't make that drug. Manufacturing quality issues. These are a lot of times found during routine quality checks and inspections in manufacturing plants. Production delays at the manufacturer. Think about it, a piece of their equipment breaks down. They have to call someone to come in and service it. That puts a delay in, in getting the drug out the door. Delays in receiving raw materials. China and India are one of our most important suppliers of raw materials. If there's any type of political turmoil, any type of trade dispute, any disease, anything going on in those countries, we're going to have a problem getting those raw materials. Disruptions from natural disasters. Most recently, tornado went through um, North Car Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. I think it was back in July. Went through a Pfizer plant, completely shut it down. It is just now starting to ramp up production. Not only did it shut down the production of that plant, but there was also, it held inventory, three months supply of excess inventory that was completely destroyed. Public health emergencies, COVID, that's the big one. Workforce challenges. Of course, there's poor labor market right now. Discontinuations of product and closures of manufacturers. This pie chart um, shows um, reasons for drug shortages back in the year 2022. And what I find interesting about this graph is that more than half is unknown or would not provide. The manufacturer does not have to tell us why there is a shortage issue. So what is the role of drug supply chain? Who is part of the drug supply chain? We have the producers of raw materials, manufacturers, vendors, regulators, wholesalers, group purchasing org organizations, healthcare organizations, and lastly, the patient. We're going to take a look at three main issues that lead to drug shortages. And those are going to be your supply, your demand, and your regulatory. Supply issues. Why are we not getting enough drug? Well, there's manufacturing issues, quality problems, voluntary recalls that affect us. Usually these recalls are after the fact due to uh, product being found to have contamination, particulate matter, or just simply their good manufacturing practices um, received violations after a routine inspection. Competing priorities. There is very low motivation to produce these low profitability drugs. <clears throat> when you follow the same processes to produce high standard drugs, high quality, high profitability drugs, you, you want to chase that. You want to go after and make that money. You don't want to spend the same money making little or no profit on these generic drugs. Unavailability of raw materials. As I mentioned, a lot of our API, our active pharmaceutical ingredients, come from overseas. If there's ever an issue over there, we're not going to be able to get the product over here to make it. During COVID, there was an issue with packaging materials. They had the active pharmaceutical ingredient, but we couldn't import or export it because we did not have the proper materials to ship those active pharmaceutical ingredients. Business issues, plant closures. Again, it costs a lot of money to follow all the strict standards that come with being a good manufacturer. A lot of these low um, market manufacturers can't afford to stay in business. And then some of them decide to consolidate and work together. So you take where you have two manufacturers making a product combined into one that takes a manufacturer out of, out of the market. And the last supply issue that we're gonna discuss is logistics. We can have disrupted transport shipping delays. And most of the time this is due to, to things we can't control. Horrible weather, 
traffic, natural disasters, or sometimes it is just poor management of the transportation system. The second issue we're gonna take a look at is demand. Now, a lot of manufacturers work in a just-in-time inventory. And what that means is they have no fixed quantity for a fixed duration. They align the raw materials from suppliers with exactly what they need to meet current demand. There's no backup plan. There's no reserve stock. So if anything happens, they're not able to meet that increased demand. The next demand issue is increased marketing. And this can be predictable or unpredictable. Predictable, seasonal, right now, cough and cold, flu products. We know that's gonna happen. You're starting to see all the ads out on TV right now. That is something we should be able to predict and increase that, increase that um, supply for the demand. Then we have the unpredictable, an outbreak, natural disaster, tornado in North Carolina that I mentioned. Several years back, we had the Hurricane Maria that affected the Baxter plant. We couldn't get saline backs. How can you not get saline backs? And the last demand issue is the tendering system. Now this is where um, drug manufacturers purchase medications at a competitive price. And what it does is it takes multiple manufacturers out of the market. It takes it from, a single, uh, from multiple suppliers down to a single supplier. And this could cause issue as that single supplier just can't keep up with the demand. The third issue that we're gonna take a look at is regulatory. Why is the government making this so difficult? Why do we have all these rules? Why can we not just get the drugs that we need? Well, we have voluntary recalls is one of the reasons, and that's a lack of confidence in the company's product. Or we have technical reasons. They put out a product, the product is fine, but they mislabeled it, causing issues. There's increased oversight by the FDA right now. During COVID, there was not a lot of in-person inspections. That has changed. There's a lot more inspections going on right now. So we're seeing a lot more violations um, of the good manufacturing practices. A lot of times these resolutions are timely. They cost money. And by the time the manufacturer is able to get back up and running, uh, they have to wait for the FDA to come and do a reinspection for them. Recent manufacturing plants with quality issues. In 2022, the FDA issued 72 good manufacturing practice violations to manufacturing companies. These ranged anywhere from quality control issues, not having proper production records, written procedures in hand, no cleaning logs, no testing to show. And the last regulatory issue is that it's a long and complex process to obtain approvals. Even if we had a new manufacturer want to jump into the market, it is gonna be very costly and it is gonna take years. This pie graph um, shows what the FDA did. Now this was back in 2010 and 2011, but actions they took to prevent drug shortages from occurring. You can see majority 71% was an expedited review of those applications. The other two that I wanna take a look at and spend a minute discussing is the regulatory flexibility and discretion and the regulatory discretion regarding importation. So a lot of times the FDA will come in and they'll extend dating on products to help us get through a shortage. And then the regarding importation, y'all have probably heard, we um, received cisplatin um, this summer from China. We were down to nothing and the FDA approved 14 lots be imported from a manufacturing company in China. So how did we get here right now? Well, one of the, there's three main reasons why today we're standing here talking about drug shortages. One of them is closure of manufacturers. Acorn Pharmaceuticals closed back in February of this year. They produced 75 generic drugs in the market. A few of those drugs, they were the sole, sole, sole supplier of that drug, tongue twister there. The FDA, like I said, increased inspections, citing quality concerns, causing additional recalls. 
Lupin Pharmaceuticals is a is a name that y'all are probably familiar with. It makes a lot of generic drugs. They received seven, several quality control violations that led to temporary disruption of their products. Intus Pharmaceuticals. They're the company that was responsible for producing cisplatin and carboplatin. They were caught destroying records. Records were torn up. Acid was poured on them. They were temporarily shut down so that they could do a recheck. That's what led to the cisplatin shortage. And then in turn, everyone turned to carboplatin, which is also produced there. Now we have the carboplatin shortage. And of course, can't forget triple threat, COVID, RSV, and influenza. It's a global threat. It's everywhere. 80% of the raw materials are imported from abroad. When there's, when there's disease going on, they don't have workers, plants have to shut the doors, we're not getting our product. So what's behind the shortage of amoxicillin, penicillin, and others? Really wish I had a great fascinating answer for this one, and it's just not. Um, antibiotic usage has increased almost 50% since the year 2000. Moxicillin, it's in high demand everywhere. There's only a few countries that produce it, and some of those manufacturers in those countries have suffered many regulatory and quality issues. We've had increase in flu, RSV, and COVID, which are not treated by amoxicillin, but the infections that they can cause are. Throw in penicillin use has increased due to an increase in syphilis and competitive shortages. Doctors, when the amoxicillin sh started, providers started then prescribing penicillin in its place. So the amoxicillin shortage caused a shortage and increased use in penicillin, which then caused a shortage in penicillin due to the increase in syphilis and using penicillin to treat. The vicious cycle that keeps on going and going and going. Oncolytic drugs, that's the big one in the news right now. These are widely used generics that are on shortage. Methotrexate, carboplatin, cisplatin, um, all of these drugs are in shortage in some capacity. Manufacturing site closes, no longer making these oncolytic drugs. Discontinuation of product due to economic reasons. Price gouging. We had a product, Fludarabine, cost $50 a vial for us to purchase it. We saw that it was in shortage, supply was dwindling down. Oh, oh. Here pops in another manufacturer charging $2,300 for a vial of fludarabine. We bought it. We didn't have a choice. We had to. $50, $2,300. They were the only people that had fludarabine. Yeah, that's, uh, that's just crazy to think about it. It's unfortunate is what it is. Um, cisplatin I mentioned. That supply was dwindling down in the U.S. We needed help. We needed something to be done. FDA says, all right, we'll agree to allow the importation of the product from China. That's how we got our cisplatin. So they are, they are helping out. The FDA is doing what they can. They're not doing enough, but they're doing what they can. White House has even stepped in and trying to take some action to strengthen the supply chain. So how do hospitals and health systems, how do we learn about a shortage? Well, a lot of it is from our wholesalers. Cardinal, McKesson, Amerisource, Bergen, those are the big three. Uh, sometimes it's from manufacturers putting out notices that a product may be on shortage. Other hospitals, we all have friends, family that work across town, even across states. Uh, we rely on each other to convey messages on shortages. And then, of course, the ASHP and FDA shortage websites. When a medication is short supply, change or delay medical procedures, limit your treatment options, and increase the cost. So I put these uh, two websites. I visit them daily. Um, they're the best two websites that I've found out there to help convey information of drug shortages. And this is one put out by the FDA. This uh, list is inclusive of shortages when manufacturers are unable to meet market demand. They do not consider a product on shortage if there are one or more manufacturers that are able to support the demand. 
Now, ASHP, American Society of Health System Pharmacists, has their own drug shortage website. It's curated by the University of Utah Drug Information Service. And this list is inclusive of supply issues that affects how the pharmacy prepares or dispenses a drug product. A little, you'll see some differences between the two lists. We're gonna spend a few minutes talking about what we do and the process for making a decision on how we are gonna manage these drug shortages. Once we have a drug shortage that's identified, there's two arms that we look at. We look at the operational side and then we look at the therapeutic side. Once we do those assessments, then we put that information that we've gathered together and we do a shortage impact analysis. And then we establish a final plan and communicate and implement. So let's spend a few minutes talking about our operational assessment. We, can, we need to validate the details of the shortage, understand the scope. Is this just a short term? Is this just our, cur our local DC is out of the product and they'll have it in in a few days? We don't wanna pull the fire alarm if we don't have to pull the fire alarm. Pharmacy buyers and uh, your procurement teams must determine quantity, day supply on hand. What does our pur purchases look like over the past 90 days? Can inventory be centralized throughout the hospital, taking all the drugs that are in the Pixis machines and centralizing them in the pharmacy to have more control over what's being used? All there are alternative sources to procure the drug. Look at other, other wholesalers or secondary um, sites. Are there new procedures for patient care process that we're gonna have to take a look at and implement? When we look, find those alternative, alternative sources, we have to make sure that there's going to be a supply of those. We don't want to have to keep changing, jumping ship to something else. And then, of course, we want to make sure that we estimate the time to when this is all going to go down. In the therapeutic assessment, we need to identify the population that's going to be affected. As pharmacists, we're the drug experts. We often get called on to make recommendations, such as, can we use an alternative route? What are the proper therapeutic alternatives that are safe and effective? Do we need to place restrictions on drugs that are in short supply? Implementing prescribing guidelines and address, addressing any of the safety precautions. If there's no alternative for a drug that's on shortage, as I mentioned before, procedures can be canceled and therapies can be missed or delayed. Shortage impact analysis. We need to estimate the impact on patient care. What are these therapeutic differences? What is the patient going to see? What are they going to feel? Any side effects? The prescribing processes. What is going to be different for the provider? Does he have to order different labs for this drug? What is the preparation process? Is this a drug that now is going to take a team of IV technicians and pharmacists to compound it from bulk powder? Administration, are the nurses gonna to have to do anything differently to administer the drug to the patient? Then we're gonna assess that financial impact to the patient in hospitals, increased cost, higher cost to get the drug sometimes, sometimes the alternatives are more expensive, and sometimes you're gonna to have to have more staff to do those compounding and other things that need to be done to get the drug ready for the patient. And of course, lost, lost revenue, canceled surgeries or procedures. Now we wanna make sure we communicate. And sometimes in this world, that's the hardest thing for us to do and make sure you communicate to the right people. Need to make sure you include the details of the shortage, the effective date of when this, of when this is going to happen, what the therapeutic alternatives are, prescribing guidelines in place and any new procedures that may have to be followed. When you're looking to who you have to communicate, it is a whole bunch of people. You have your pharmacists, your pharmacy technicians, nurses, providers, your informatics team that may have to change something in the um, electronic health record, your pharmacy buyers, your medication safety team. Also need to inv involve finance, revenue analysts, make sure that drugs are covered. Um, it goes on and on whenever you have to implement drug shortage guidelines. Now we're gonna implement our final plan. 
you want to make sure you leverage support. Get your, uh, your task force involved for that specialty. You want to make sure that you implement the changes in the systems, technology, and inventory all at the same time. And you need to educate and train your staff on any new procedures. Communication to providers. That's probably the most important piece, um, at least for me in my role. And what I've done to try to make this as streamlined process as possible is to create and implement a standard process for my team to follow. We have an institution-specific drug shortage list that providers are able to access. I have a set template for email communication to send out shortage information, just straight into the point, major points, drug, how much, how many weeks or days on hand we have left, what the alternatives are, you know, what, what the enterprise, the practice is saying to do. Using our EHR um, to send messages to the doctors if they go to prescribe a tool, having a pop up prescribe a tool, prescribe a drug, have a pop-up message that, um, that pushes them to provide the alternative for the patient. And then of course, using our decentral, pharma, decentral pharmacist in specific clinical areas to convey the message to the practice. So I'm gonna spend my last few minutes talking about how do we fix this problem? Short-term, enforce existing shortage regulations requirements. Legislation requires manufacturers to report information. We need to improve the transparency into manufacturer quality. We need to make those manufacturing inspection reports available to us so we can make informed decisions on what is going on. We need to encourage new manufacturers and new manufacturer sites. FDA needs to expedite the review of these applications and waive fees to get drugs promptly into the market. We need to see some sort of incentive for these manufacturers that are doing the right thing and producing these drugs to keep them in the market so that they don't feel that they're you know, producing these low profit generics and not getting anything in return. Long term, encourage long term guaranteed volume contracts, maintain a buffer supply with strict penalties for failure to supply, we need to diversify the manufacturing base. Make it a rule that we have, or a law, that we have a minimum number of manufacturers producing these critical drugs. Have redundancy in the supply chain. We can also look to finance our private sector buffer supplies with our wholesalers. Allow them to have and hold a national stockpile so that any of these critical drugs that may go on shortage, we have access to a supply. Last thing, technology. Using AI to predict a drug shortage. Identify newly emerging shortages as early as possible using your own health system's data. Use your drug inventory and utilization data. Use your wholesale purchasing and utilization information. Take all of that, combine it together, and uh, put out information about sources from shortages from public sources. There are a few companies that are jumping into this market. I think this is gonna be the next big thing if we will be able to see a few weeks out um, what, which drugs are going to go on shortage. So the last thing I wanna end with is drug shortages are increasing. They're lasting longer. They're impacting patient care for sure. It's not practical for us to be able to prepare for every single potential shortage out there, but we try. The keys to success are going to be found in assessing your options, your ability to make changes very fast, and communication. So with that, I'll take any questions y'all may have. <laughs>